Oh, just had to uh, come here to the um, dump spot here at Moira. It's actually, we're heading south um, towards Bega. So after we came over the bridge there at Moira, we turned off into Church Street and now we're into Shaw Street and uh, very easy to find. Basically, it's just come past the park and you can drive in. Very handy. One of the uh, exciting things about traveling sort of at hip camps and that is they're all off grid. So you don't really have any power or water available at the hip camp. However, there's water available throughout the state. This is one water filling station here on Bermagui Road at the Garbo turnoff. So it's just outside of Bermagui. Uh, if you use wiki camps, it shows you the exact location. So perfect little spot. It's off the road. Nice and safe. And basically, this one's free. Sometimes you have to pay some money. Uh, we've been known to pay like $2 for 150 litres, but this one is free and you can get 200 litres at a time. So basically what you do is just connect up. I think little washers off the tap, so therefore it's leaking a bit. But yeah, up to 200 litres. Push the button. When you push the button, just hold it for about five seconds before it interacts. So anyway, we'll fill our tanks up and off we go so easy um wiki camps very handy to have when you're on the road Just let this storm pass us by and we might go out and do some touring of this area. So much to see around this area. We're just up from Bermagui. So uh, yeah, we had visions of swimming in the beautiful waters around Mystery Bay, but we can actually swim the beautiful waters around the campsite today. It's, uh, it's a little bit wet. This campsite has nine spots, I believe. Uh, it's only about half full at the moment. But yeah, the other ones we've been going to is just single caravan spots. But this one has a few more. Nicely spaced out. Fairly flat level, beautiful grass, manicured again. But yeah. Anyway, we'll go and do some adventuring. Soon. Well, we just arrived here at Tilba and uh, it's got an old phone box too. It's very old, it's very old historic town. It's still in sort of its original condition but it looks for yeah. a few people here. Uh, we'll find somewhere to park and we will have a look around. So, yeah, we'll find something really good. 
like a bakery and a coffee. Right in front of you. Right there. It's a car spot. in central Tilba and we're here with Claire who knows a little bit of the history of the town and yeah so what's what's it all about? Uh, so the town of central Tilba was founded by a man called Samuel Bate and he had a lot of property down the road at Tilba Tilba and he wanted to basically have the area gazetted as a town Yeah. Uh, and he did that in 1895 oh, by wow. building this store which is the general store. Oh wow. The pub. Yep and the courthouse across the road. Wow. So in order to have a town gazetted, you needed to have certain public amenities. Yep. Uh, and that was a store, a post office, and a courthouse, police station, and a pub or a hotel. Oh. Uh, and that was how it happened. And the, the actual area of Central Tilbury basically grew up around those public buildings. Um, the main original village was Tilbury Tilbury down the hill. So that's actually much older than Central Tilbury. Oh. Sort of 1870s type vintage. Yep. yep. Um, and the town has sort of had lots of ups and downs through history, um, really peaked during the gold rush times, um, sort of, yeah, 1890s, 1900s, yep. gold was discovered on Mount Dromedary, and oh, wow. there was lots of gold mining, lots of activity, lots of action. Uh, in fact, the general store here had a dynamite bunker out the back where we used to sell dynamite to the miners. No way. Me personally, obviously. Yep. Um, <laughs> So there's lots of interesting history like that around the town. So there's oh, lots wow. of interesting old um, bits and bobs that you can find lying around. Yep. So we've got mining history, obviously the pastoral history. The Bates family were pastoralists. They were the first dairy farmers in the area. Um, they did really amazing things like introducing um, sweet corn, maize to feed to cattle, wow. uh, which wasn't very common previously. Yep. Uh, they also had a hydroelectric system, which they put into central Tilba in the 1900s, early 1900s. So. Oh you know, the town actually had electricity. Wow. Uh, it was one of the first places in New South Wales. So, oh, right. and that was all funded by the local landowners. And I think the locals had to pay a small amount of money each year to have their electricity. Yep. Probably paid. a lot less than what we pay now. I think it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. it's a really interesting place, yeah. as well as being, you know, spectacularly beautiful. That's fantastic. We just um, had a bit of a walk around the, today and the old buildings are preserved really nicely yeah, in that. Yeah, so it's been so, well preserved. Yeah. Um, it was taken on by the National Trust in 1974. Yep. As, um, what's it called? Well, it's National Interest. National, and, yep. Yeah, yep. and National Heritage. So oh, wow. We're, we're pretty keen on the preservation of the town and the region. Um, we wow. really want it to stay just as it is, so yep. that we're uh, looking after it for the future. Perfect. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Claire, for that. That's, that's all right. No worries. It's amazing history, and and here we Positive are. It's still here, and we're sort of part of it today. Yeah. So thank you so much. No worries. Excellent. Thank you. So Nettie, what you got there? Two coffees. Yeah. Why? It's Tilba's best coffee. Wow. How good's that? Here we are at the general store. Yep. Enjoy the best coffee. Enjoy. Oh. oh. What have you found there, Nettie? Another phone box. Mm. Yes, you have. Nice old ones. Yes, the old phone boxes look great, don't they? They do. Okay, this was Paddy Moore's Butcher Shop. The building was built in 1897 from local eucalyptus timbers with imported Baltic pine lining.
Wow. Bell Central Tilba. That was. It was a very quaint little shopping centre. Oh, mate. Got some great stuff. Nice little uh, a breadboard for Max and a nice dress for Nat. Yes. A nice anklet for Nat. Yes. And uh, a couple uh, of fridge magnets and a little beetle clicker. Oh, yeah. That was good. So, yeah. yeah, we had a great time. So, yeah, totally recommend it. A few yes. people here today. Yes. Right? That was all good. Just going over a beautiful little bridge here on the way to Bermagui, the back way. We're actually heading off to Camel Rock. So I've just come here to Wallaga Lake, I hope that's how it's pronounced. It's on the Bermagui Road uh, and Natty has brought out the big gun today. She's got the big camera out to take some photos of some swans which are out there. So we're actually on the way to Camel Rock which I believe is further down that way and uh, that should be good to see but right now we're taking photos of beautiful black swans How is, how's it going natty yeah good so we just arrived here at camel rock and you can certainly understand why they call it camel rock the spectacular camel rock is an ancient formation comprised of folded 470 million year old turbidite beds that were created by underwater avalanches 450 million years ago. Wow. So there you go. That's what 470 million year old rock looks like. Pretty cool. Well, g'day. Uh, we've just come back here to Camel Rock. Um, last night we are doing a little bit of research of what's around the area and I know this horse head is actually just a little bit further along the track from Camel Rock. So we'll go for a walk and yeah. uh, it's probably about 750 metres apparently yeah. along the cliff top and uh, check out what horse head looks like. So yeah. let's go. end of the track that we just hiked, 750 metres, you come to this observation and there is Horsehead Rock. How good is that? So just a little bit further on from uh, Camel Rock is Horsehead Rock. Sunny shining this morning. We've got an absolute glorious day. So we've decided to come to the Blue Pool here at Bermagui. To do a rock pool down the bottom of this, these stairs. And uh, we might just spend the day here. Check this out. Wow, looks amazing. Pool. Yeah. What do you think? Great. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. 
So, we've just been talking to one of the locals here, and apparently in this rock pool is numerous little slug creatures. Might be able to see it without my shadow. Mm. And apparently, this is one of few places in Australia where you'll see so many different little slugs and creatures and things underwater. So we might just kit up with our snorkels and goggles, Natty. Yes. Brave the cool water. Yes, it's very cool. <laughs> I think once we go numb, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we might just go for a little swim and explore and just see what we can capture. So. Yes. This is going to be a good day. Well, there you go, Natty. Fantastic. Yeah, another hip camp done and dusted. Yep. Been here for four nights at the Fig Tree Hip Camp here at Mystery Bay. Great, stunning. It's a campsite that has about nine spots, uh, nice level blocks, open yes. area, easy yes. access. Yes. Um, garbage collection. Yes. The owner of the hip camp, he's, he's yeah. a top bloke, yeah. rides around, checks, makes sure everything's right. Yeah. We're only 15, 20 minutes drive from Bermagui and oh, so much to see Beautiful down there. Down there yeah. Yeah. We went to Camel Rock yes. one day. Went to Horsehead Rock. Right. The Blue Pool. Yeah. Checked out some of the beaches. Yep. Went to a cafe for lunch. Yep, the River Rock Cafe, beautiful yep. coffee. Oh yeah, and food, yum. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, that's it from here. We're uh, yes. now off an hour down south, down the coast to... Ta Ta Tathra. Tathra. Hmm. Or Tathra, I think they pronounce it. Tathra. Tathra. So yeah, so we're going to get water on the way at uh, Bega, go to the dump spot. Yep. And set up this afternoon and yes. have another full night somewhere else so yes. and we'll show you there yeah so should be good that's it from fig tree brilliant <laughs>